If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. In this question, we are concerning ourselves with an electric field that is produced by a uniformly charged disk. And so here is a picture taken from the textbook that gives a charged disk and the charged disk is going to be producing an electric field that points straight up. And what we are trying to figure out is this distance Z at which the electric field, which would be pointing upward, is going to be equal to half of the electric field that exists at the center of the disk. So the electric field over here would be twice as big as the electric field located at that distance z. And it turns out that the book goes through a rather complex derivation giving the electric field produced by a charged disk. And we need to look at that formula next. And so here is that equation. It involves z, which is that distance from the center of the disk. It involves the radius of the disk itself. And then it has the surface charge density of the disk itself and also this constant epsilon. And so this is the equation that would give the electric field at this distance z. If we were interested in the electric field at the center, we could also use that equation. So we're going to call this EC and the C would represent the center of the disk. And you just have to ask yourself, what would the value of z be at this center? And of course the value of z right there would be zero because there is no distance off of the disk itself. And if z was zero, then this whole term right here would go to zero. And we would be left with simply sigma over two epsilon. And so this would be the expression for the electric field located at the center of the disk. And then the other equation above would be the electric field at that distance z above the disk. And if we go back and reread the question, we want the electric field above the disk to equal one half of the magnitude of the field at the center. So this electric field must equal half of this electric field. In an equation form, we can set it up as follows. And so again, this equation represents the electric field located above the disk equaling one half of the value of the electric field at the center of the disk. And our job is to solve this equation for z. Now, if we look carefully at this equation, we're going to notice that sigma over two epsilon appears on both sides of the equation. So effectively, what we can do is divide both sides by that term. And of course, if we do that, then it's going to cancel out on both sides of the equation. And now to carry on solving for z, we could perhaps subtract one from both sides of the equation. A negative appears on both sides, so if we divide both sides of the equation by negative one or multiply both sides by negative one, then those negatives will cancel out. And what is with this fucking thing? Perhaps next what we can do is in order to get rid of this square root is square both sides of this equation. Now when we square the left hand side we have to square both the numerator and the denominator so the numerator is going to become z squared. In the denominator when we square a square root that effectively of course cancels the square root so we'll be left with just z squared plus r squared. The right hand side same idea square the numerator that remains 1 square the denominator that becomes a 4. Why don't we go ahead then and cross multiply. So when we cross multiply this direction, we're going to end up with 4z squared. When we cross multiply in the other direction, we're going to just have the z squared plus r squared. We could subtract z squared from both sides. That's going to leave us with 3z squared is equal to r squared. We could then divide both sides by 3, so now we have z squared is equal to r squared over 3. And then finally, in order to solve for z, let's take the square root of both sides. Over here, we'll separately square root the numerator and denominator. So now we're left with z is equal to r over the square root of 3. And so at this point, all we have to do is plug in the value of the radius. And that was given, in this case, as 0.6 meters. 
So we'll just have 0.6 meters divided by the square root of 3. And we are left with approximately 0.346 meters as our value of z. So that would represent the distance above the charged disk at which the electric field here is going to be half the magnitude of the electric field at the center of the disk. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for similar videos. Remember that you can send in your own question in the form of a picture or full text of the question to the email address displayed on the screen, and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.